Hi, gang. Bob Boving here with The Mystery Project. It's Chapter 11 of Elf Silver's series, Clean Sweep from Halifax. Life in Member 2 County is a combination of struggle in terms of making ends meet and serenity when they do. But like the nearby ocean, storms can suddenly lash their world. And often Bonnie Marsden is right in the eye of that storm. Deborah Allen and Richard Donat star as Bonnie and Ben Marsden in Borderline Collie. And it's not a barrel of laughs. Well, I'm glad that was the last load, Ben. My nerves ain't so good anymore. I ain't neither. You gonna hold on to it? Just till we can all four get together and do the divvy. You gotta save something? I'll just tuck it in a rolled up pair of socks. Not even Bonnie goes in my sock drawer. It's all right, Floyd. I got a couple of beers in the drop box. Mm, sounds good, lot. <sighs> yes, Floyd, I'll save a sip for you. I never heard of a dog named Floyd. It wasn't my idea. The day we brought him back from the pound, my son Robbie said we had to name him Floyd. I asked him why, and Robbie said, because he's a pretty boy, but you wouldn't want to mess with him. He don't look mean. Now to stop jumping against Jane. Oh, he's not mean, just crazy as a sack of hammers. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I always do before going to bed is let Floyd in for the night so we never bother to lock the doors. Anyone comes through that door that shouldn't, is never going to come through a door again. It's funny, Bonnie's car's not here. I told her this morning I had some work on, but I'd be home from Melissa's school bus, and she said she didn't have any work on today anyway. Maybe she gone shopping. With what? Huh. It's funny her car's not here. Bonnie Marston? Mm-hmm. I'm Dr. McGuigan. One of our McGuigans? I grew up in Member 2 County, if that's what you mean. My father's Frank McGuigan. Maybe you know him. A little. And your uncle's. And you're a doctor. Well, I made it through med school at Dell. Now I'm in residency. Guess that makes you the black sheep of the family. <laughs> you do know my family. Now you say you've been feeling some abdominal pain? Some. Well, it was only a sort of soreness for the last few days, and then all of a sudden around noon today, it started getting excruciating. Tylenol couldn't cut it, and uh, I started getting scared. Scared? You see, Dr. McGuigan... Vince, friend of the family. Vince, uh, last year I had some operations. Dragged on a long time, long enough for me to lose my job at the credit union. The doctors still don't know whether it was just because the warranty on my plumbing expired early, or whether it was because of Melissa. Melissa? Melissa, the medical miracle. You see, I had my tubes tied about 17 years ago, and then about seven years ago, along came Melissa. Hmm. Lucky for your gynecologist, he wasn't practicing in the States. She. Whatever. Could you lie down on your back, please, so I can do a little probing? Sure, but it'll take a minute. Ooh. Uh, so you uh, living in town, and now you're in residency? <laughs> Not hardly. I still have student loans to pay off. It'll feel easier if you raise your knees. Yeah, I remember the routine. So you're uh, back living with your folks for now? No. But my grandfather's been living alone since my grandmother died, and the old house has a lot of room, so I get free accommodation, and he gets... <clears throat> oh. That's where it hurts. How did you ever guess? <laughs> Sorry. But I think you'll be relieved to know, Bonnie, that the pain isn't a sign of further complications. I'd say you have a severe bladder infection. Just a bladder infection? Well, just a bladder infection can be worse than the Spanish Inquisition. And I'd say you get a doozy. I'm going to put you on a course of antibiotics. Enough Demerol to pretty much knock you out for the next 24 hours while the antibiotics are taking hold. And knock me out? Well, I'll put it this way. You won't be feeling any pain. Oh, sounds good to me. Do you have anyone to drive you? No, there was nobody else home. Then don't start on the Demerol till you get home. I sure hope there aren't any radar traps. Dang fool's got his chain wrapped around that tree again. 
Well, he'll be all right for another couple minutes. He is a pretty-looking dog, but he's not showing his teeth. What kind of breed is he? He's what they call a borderline collie. Mm. I thought so. Had one of them when I was a kid. Oh, there's the dang school bus. Better go look for Melissa. Thanks for the beer, Lockman. You bet. Daddy, Daddy. What's the matter, Pumpkin? You walked from the bus stop before. There's a man on the road. He was following me. Stay there, Melissa. See you soon, Ben. The socks dry. Uh, yeah, Lachlan. There's no man walking on the road, Pumpkin. There was. It was Creepy Charlie. Who? There was a lady came to school to make us street proofed. I remember helping Mummy in the garden and her saying the worst weed to watch out for was Creepin' Charlie. So I said in class, watch out for Creepin' Charlie, and everybody laughed. It wasn't funny. Well, it's good to be careful, Melissa, but the man on the road could have been just a visitor seeing one of our neighbors. Maybe. Well... Let's go get Floyd untangled. Floyd, did you get yourself rammed around that dang tree again? So, you like your old man's cooking better than your mother's? No. <laughs> well, thank you, Miss Melissa. Is Mom going to be okay? Oh, sure, she'll be just fine. Just for the next day or so, she won't really be here. <laughs> well, she'll be here. She sure ain't going anywhere. She's sort of off in dreamland. XK55, Pisquick Village, Fire Department. Three vehicle collision, Bullard's Road. Serious injuries. Oh, hell. You'll you have to finish the dishes. You can't. I have to. I'm the only first response guy that's. There's people hurt, Pumpkin. You can't leave me all alone. Creepin' Charlie. You're not alone, honey. Your mother's just down the hall having a snooze. But in... she's not all here. You'd sleep safe if Floyd was in the house, wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. Well, you go and get Floyd and bring him in. I've got to hurry. But uh, here, take Floyd's leash. Okay? Okay. I'll take him for a poop walk when I get home. Here, Floyd. Oh, God. Mommy! Don't come in here, Melissa. Just go into the kitchen and reach the phone down for Mommy, okay? And dial 911. I'd say, Mrs. Marston, that most of the blood spattered around isn't the dog's. From the amount of blood, I'd say he kept on biting even after his back was broken. I'm filled with Demerol, Corporal Qualchuk. I'm not supposed to be able to feel anything. The perpetrator must have been wearing heavy work boots, but that's not unusual around here. Shh, it's all right, buddy. Did your daughter happen to notice any details about the man she thought was following her this afternoon? I'm not sure. If there was a pedophile stalking her, he could have been watching the house and seen your husband leave. It is unusual that a man who preys on children wouldn't run from the first growl. Unfortunately, there's no such thing as a typical criminal. I'll talk to Melissa tomorrow. See if I can get a description. Good idea, but it may not be necessary. Whoever did this is going to get caught immediately anyway. How? Every hospital and doctor in the area will be alerted for a patient in need of a lot of stitches, and maybe a blood transfusion and a booster tetanus shot. It's all right. 
Some dogs kind of make a mockery out of Darwin, don't they? How's that? Evolution says the prime directive is self-preservation. All your dog had to do was run when the first boot hit him and stay out of the way. He wouldn't. You see, he was. He's. The day Ben and Robbie brought him home from the pound, I said, "I thought you were going to get a puppy." But he'd looked at them with his big brown eyes, and he knew he was due to be put down. Whoever had him before did something to that dog. Took him a long time to believe we weren't going to hurt him. So if it looks to him like anybody's going to try to hurt us, I don't want to move him, but you don't have to. The mudroom's just a add-on. Nothing under the floor but two by fours on the ground. What's his name? Floyd. You're a hell of a good dog, Floyd. I've got a tarp in the trunk. I'll load him up in a minute. No, Ben will dig a hole for him out back. Barney. Forensics will have to take blood and fiber and tissue samples from his teeth and claws. You want to make sure we nail whoever did this, don't you? Oh yeah, I want him nailed. But I want that dog back, buried here. Nothing. I don't understand it, Mrs. Marsden. We've expanded the alert to every medical practitioner in the province, but none of them encountered any such emergency four nights ago or since. I don't see what more you can do, Corporal Coulter. He has to get medical attention eventually. But in the meanwhile, to be safe, it might be a good idea if somebody accompanied your daughter to the school bus every morning and met the school bus when she comes home. We're already doing that. And if it might be possible for your husband to be home whenever your daughter's not in school. Ben's got no work on for the next few days. If something comes up, he can probably pick his own hours. Good. Your husband staying around home will solve another worry besides your daughter's safety. What's that? I just think it would be better for all concerned if I had the suspect in custody before Ben knew who it was. I understand. I'll let you know the instant I hear anything. Thank you. Bye now. Nothing. Not a damn thing. Bonnie.、Um... There's something I. Well, I didn't figure there was any point talking about it. If Melissa was right about creeping Charlie and Kowalczyk was right about catching them right away. Talking about what? Uh, there might have been a different reason besides Melissa for somebody to want to get into our house that night. Oh. There's four thousand dollars wrapped up in a pair of work socks in my drawer. What? Well. You remember a couple of years ago, the Brunswick Oil Company put up three gas stations in Pisiquid Village. Sure, they figured everybody'd be too stupid to figure out they were just going to undercut the local stations till they choked out the competition and then jack up their prices. Well, when Brunswick Oil finally decided to cut their losses, shut down their stations here and try it again somewhere else, one of the guys at the fire hall offered to buy one of the structures for a workshop. Offered him fifty thousand dollars. The company just laughed in his face. Said they could make five times that in tax write-offs if they just bulldozed it and left the concrete pad. You're taking an awful long way around to four thousand dollars in your sock drawer. Well, I, I just want you to understand how it got there. So, the guy who offered to buy it got kind of mad. He happened to know somebody who was going to be working on a destruction crew, and I knew some people that deal in all kinds of salvage. So every night there'd be two piles of trash at the destruction site. One pile was trash, trash, and the other pile would be perfectly good pipes and fittings, propane tanks, wash sinks. So you stole it. We didn't steal it, Bonnie. Or if we did, who did we steal it from? Whether or not we took that stuff or it got smashed and trashed, the company still gets its tax right off, and the tax department still gets stiffed for it. The only difference is that me and three other guys got four thousand dollars to split between us. What three other guys? Harlan Wade, John McGuigan. John McGuigan, you got yourself tied in with the McGuigans. I didn't get tied in. Just one little deal. Anyway, wasn't that a McGuigan that fixed up that infection that was ripping your guts out? And who else? Lachlan from the Black Briar. 
I wouldn't want to think it about Lachlan. Hell, I wouldn't want to think that about any of the boys. But he knew about old Floyd, how I never let him in till just before I go to bed, and he knew where I was going to keep the money. But the other two knew that already. It was sort of a joke about my wool safe, because that's where I always go. Always? Well, once in a long while, a few times, a little deal came along. So I thought maybe I'd go look in on Lachlan and Harlan and John McGuigan just to make sure they hadn't had any medical problems lately. But the problem is, uh, I'm kind of mad right now. You're not the only one. And you know what'll happen. I'll go in meaning to just be cool, and next thing you know, I'm throwing somebody up against the wall. But you, you can find things out from people without them even knowing you asked a question. All right, I'll do it. But we're going to have a lot to talk about later. Right? Okay, thanks. Bye now. Lachlan won't be at the Black Briar till the night shift. Uh, they didn't say he'd been off work, but I guess he could be hobbling around behind the bar and no one would notice. Uh, I guess I'll drive by McGuigan's garage and gas up the car. It'd buy me a bit more time there if I got the tank filled, but I've only got five dollars. Uh, yeah. Guess I know where I could lay my hands on a few extra dollars. Filler? You must be feeling pretty flush, Bonnie. Just cleaned four houses in two days. The way I see it, John, better I stock up right away on things I'm going to need, or I've gone spend it all on something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Did they find out who broke in at your place yet? No. Wish I could find out before the Mounties do. I sure would like to put the boots to whoever put the boots to my old buddy Floyd. Old buddy? I've been up to your place once or twice to give Ben a hand with a couple of things, and Floyd would always hang around and guard us. Just happened to be times when you was off working somewhere. Guess it did. That'll be twenty-eight dollars. Okay. Uh, I'm getting worried about my muffler. It might be getting rusted out. Should I pull in over the pit? Uh, no need. As long as your door handle will hold me. Nope. Looks pretty good. Yeah, a bit of rust, but it might even get you through next winter. You're pretty spry for one of us middle-aged types. <laughs> nah, it's just what you're used to. I probably wouldn't last 30 seconds scrubbing floors. Well, thanks for checking it out, John. Uh, Bonnie? Yeah? That'll be $28. Then I stopped by Wade's restaurant on the way home to see if they had any specials at the butcher counter. They were getting a produce delivery, and I could see Harlan out back through the window, but I didn't bother to talk to him. Why not? Because he was jumping on and off the back of the produce truck like a mountain goat. So, that leaves good old easy-going Lachlan. Ben, you'll have to stay here and look after Melissa. Not much point in me going yet if he doesn't come on shift till six. Lachlan usually comes in at least a half hour early. He has a couple of beers at a corner table. Makes him more tolerant to the customers. Bonnie, pull up a chair. I'd get up, but my knees is kind of sore. <clears throat> what do you have? Oh, just a draft. I'm buying. Well, then white rum and ginger ale. Hey, Andy, white rum and ginger. And another moose. Oh, damn. Here, let me help you. Jeez, it really is true what they say about women's purses. I thought your knees were sore. I said they were sore, not broke. <laughs> me, I'm broke. But I ain't sore about it. Here's your... Something or other. Well, I think that's got her. Let me give you a hand up. Thanks. Here you go. Just put it on my employee tab, Andy. The reason I thought I should buy you a drink, Bonnie, is... I know it's not much, but I sure am sorry about what happened to your dog. So sad. And I was just talking about him that day. Yeah, and Ben told me you were... Wait a minute, you mean you were talking about Floyd to other people besides Ben? Oh, sure. He's such an interesting dog. 
He made my conversation and all my visiting and on in the work. Visiting? Oh, I got my regular stops. Muriel Potter always puts a pot of tea on. Then the donut shop. Old Angus McGuigan's most of the time there when I am. <laughs> I shouldn't call him old. He could still clean my clock if I got him riled. Old Angus McGuigan. Yeah, I usually buy him a cup of coffee. Because he's only got the can of the pension. And his sons figure that's enough for him. Angus could jaw your ear off. Been kind of lonely since his wife died. Well, he's got his nice young grandson living with him now. But that can't be much company, him being on call at the hospital all the time. Something wrong, Bonnie? You haven't touched your drink. I will. Thanks, Lachlan. I gotta be going. They couldn't have planned all that out ahead of time. It wasn't a plan, just circumstances. Look, Dr. Vince and his grandfather are making small talk after supper that night. And they hear an old Angus's shortwave radio that there's a pileup on Bullard's Road. Angus knows you'd have to go. Vince knows I'm zonked out on Demerol. And Lachlan told Angus you don't let our interesting dog in for the night until just before you go to bed. So, there's $4,000 lying there, and all somebody has to do is walk in and pick it up. If you're right, it could just as easy have been Vince as Angus. Sweet young Dr. Vince wouldn't have the nerve. But he did his part. When old Angus got home all ripped to pieces, he had his own private doctor there to sew him back up. A doctor who wouldn't leave hospital records for Corporal Qualchuk to trace down. Well, I guess you better call up Qualchuk and tell him. No, I want to be certain. I want you to call up old Angus and tell him you and a few other fellas are taking a jaunt up to the trout stream tomorrow. Ask him if he'd like to come along. What if he says yes? He will if he can walk. of you to ask me, Ben, but I'm feeling a little poorly. A little poorly? Oh, some kind of flu infection. Doctor told me I should stay inside for a week or two. Eh, maybe more. It's... Uh... You're right. Son of a bitch. Bonnie? Damn. Bonnie, Wait. Melissa! Yeah? Leave off playing with the rabbits and go next door. Tell them I'll be back to get you in a few minutes. Hurry along now. Bonnie! Oh, it's good to see you up and about. I'm just trying to get these marigolds weeded before. You <laughs> Doesn't look to me like you really do have a gun, Angus. No more than did the last person you heard shout that. Must be awkward getting around in them crutches with your arm all bandaged up. You're lucky you got any legs left at all. I've seen old Floyd turn all ham bone into powder in about five minutes. Ben, I... You what? You better crutch yourself inside and dial 911 and tell the Mounties they got about five minutes to get here. Because if there ain't someone here in five minutes to get between you and us Marsdens, what's going to happen to you shouldn't happen to a dog. Nothing sore? No, just my left chest where he tried to punch me off. Well, you sure have moved a long way from the credit union in just about a year and a bit. How's that? Uh, well, I can't see Mrs. Marsden, the loans manager, beating the crap out of the neighborhood doctor. Maybe she might have. <laughs> oh, you sure have moved a long way from a lot of things since the Parks Department laid you off. Huh? Stealing salvage guys. It wasn't stealing. Getting up to God knows what else I don't know about yet. Bonnie, I gotta do what I can to keep up my share of the bills or we'll go under. If there was enough work rebuilding other people's back decks, hauling firewood, I'd stick to that. I know. But there's other ways of going under. 
When you wander too far out on the edges, the kinds of people who live out there... Floyd would still be running around the backyard if you hadn't got involved in that deal that wasn't really stealing. And Melissa was in the house. I'm not saying it's your fault, Ben, because it wasn't. Just the... Yeah, I know. I got a lot of things to think over. But one thing I already decided is I'm going to take Melissa down the pound and pick her up. And I already know what we're going to call it. What? Clyde. Clyde? Yeah, you know. Pretty boy Floyd, Bonnie, and... Ben. You've been listening to Episode 11 of Clean Sweep by Elf Silver. Winner this year of the Thomas Rodell Award for Fiction. It's the preeminent literary medal on the Atlantic coast. In the cast today, Deborah Allen was Bonnie. Richard Donat was Ben. Mike Pellerin was Corporal Kowalchuk. Ashley Swain was Melissa. Mark Graham was Lachlan. Cale Clark was Dr. McGuigan. Glenn Watman was John McGuigan. And Joseph Rutten was Angus McGuigan. The music was composed by Scott McMillan and David McIsaac. The performance featured Gordon Stobie, Jamie Gatti, and Andre Lacroix together with the two composers. The recording engineer was Pat Martin with sound effects by Dermot Kenny. The associate producer was Peggy Hemsworth. Borderline Collie was produced and directed in Halifax by Bill Howell, the executive producer of The Mystery Project. I'm Bob Boving, thanking you for listening and inviting your comments, and also hoping that you'll join us next time when you'll have a chance to meet our new cast member, Clyde.